When we look at our own solar system, we think of Earth as the most habitable world. After that many would probably say Mars and perhaps even the cloud tops of Venus. But after that, it's simple adding up to see that most of the potentially habitable places in our solar system are the moons of gas and ice giant planets. Leading with Titan, other moons such as Titania, Rhea, Iapetus and Callisto will surely be amongst the first places humanity colonises. So when we look at other systems, the focus may be on planets, but really and truly, perhaps the focus should be on moons. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at exomoons and their habitability. So, let's get to it. A habitable exomoon is a moon orbiting an extrasolar planet that has the ideal conditions to host life as we know it. Exomoons are exceptionally difficult to find. To see an exomoon, we need to spot a transit within a transit. We need to see the characteristic dip and brightness caused by a planet crossing in front of the face of a star. And then, we need everything to go right so that a moon is also visible from our point of view during the transit. And because moons are much smaller than planets, we need high sensitivity and very strong observations to confirm a detection. That said, so far a total of 21 exomoon candidates have been detected, although none of them have yet been confirmed. In our searches, one of the best candidates of all was identified around a cool giant Jupiter-sized planet known as Kepler-1708b that orbits a long way from its host star. The exomoon discovered is 2.6 times larger than Earth and it's an incredible find and the habitability of extrasolar moons could depend substantially on their relationships with their host planets. Exomoons are not new ideas and indeed in the sci-fi classic Alien, the planet LV426 is actually a moon in orbit around a gas giant planet that itself orbits one of the two Zeta Reticuli sun-like stars some 39 light years away. Indeed, in 2012, scientists introduced a concept to define the habitable orbits of moons. They define an inner border of a habitable moon around a certain planet and call it the circumplanetary habitable edge. Moons closer to their planet than the habitable edge are thought to be unhabitable as things stand. Interestingly as well, Lehmer et al. found that, for example, if the moon of Europa were to end up near to Earth orbit, it would only be able to hold on to its atmosphere for a few million years. However, for larger Ganymede-sized moons, venturing into the solar system's habitable zone, an atmosphere and surface water could be retained pretty much indefinitely. Models for moon formation suggest that the formation of even more massive moons than Ganymede is quite common around many of the super-Jovian exoplanets. Additionally, tidal heating could also play a large role for a moon's habitability. We already know that the moon Io, for example, has a substantially thicker atmosphere than its neighbour Europa even if it still remains relatively thin compared with the Earth. It is also speculated that moons at a distance of between about 5 and 20 planetary radii from a gas giant planet could be habitable from a tidal heating point of view. Additionally, an exomoon can potentially become tidally locked to its host planet, much like the Jovian moons are now. However, since the exomoon's primary is an exoplanet, that means it could continue to rotate relative to its star after becoming tidally locked to the planet, and thus, it would still experience a day-night cycle indefinitely. So far in our scouring of the skies, we found massive Jovian-like exoplanets known to be located within the habitable zone of their host stars. For example, with a mass half that of Saturn, 55 Cancri F is likely to be a gas giant with no solid surface. Although we have not found any moons yet, it seems almost impossible that such a huge world will not have at least a few natural satellites in orbit around it. Liquid water could indeed exist on the surface of any one of the moons of 55 Cancri F, and if it were like the gas giant planets of our solar system, it could have many, many satellites. Saturn, for example, has 82 moons, of which 5 have diameters of over a thousand kilometres. In this depiction, we imagine what kind of a view a habitable exomoon may enjoy. We see a gas giant planet with two large moons also in orbit. The advantages of such a system are the relative proximity of the moons. If our Earth were in such a place, we would no doubt have visited all our other sister moons by now, just like we have visited our own, somewhat less exciting, rocky lunar sister. What I'm saying is that if Earth were in a habitable system of moons, it seems to me like highly likely that we would have established colonies on them by now. Earth-sized exoplanets in the habitable zone around M-class red dwarf stars can often be tidally locked to the host star. This has the effect that one hemisphere also faces the star, while the other remains in darkness. An exomoon of an M-dwarf star does not face this challenge as we've already mentioned, as it is tidally locked to the planet 
and would receive light from both hemispheres. So this does open the window of possibilities for places like Proxima Centauri b, which are thought to be tidally locked, if there is indeed moons around those places. Obviously, as well, we do not have an example of this in our solar system, but the Earth-Moon system does not fall far from that tree, and probably suggests that even if tidally locked exoworlds with exomoons orbiting them are rare, there would still probably be many examples within our galaxy. If you excuse my hastily constructed allegory, Finding exomoons is a great hurdle in our thirst for knowledge. If finding exoplanets is like looking for a needle in a haystack, then finding exomoons around them would be something akin to finding a particular haystack on an Earth-sized planet and then indeed finding the needle within it. Exomoons are not a new idea and astronomers have wondered about them for many years. In the future, with improved techniques and new telescopes, we are lucky enough that many will likely be discovered in our lifetimes for us to consider. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description and thanks to those of you that have already done so. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could just be your idea that shows up next week. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your family and friends well. I'll see you on the next one.